Your reasons for listening to this show, well, those are your own. But just keep in mind that the views, information, or opinions expressed on the Tuttle Daily Podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of our sponsors. Yeah, it's called free speech, people. Nobody's forcing you to listen. One-of-a-kind shades made to order by Vaporshades.com. Vapor Shades designs the outer layer of the sunglasses just like a wrap on a car. They customize your sunglasses, marbling the paint. The end result is no two pair of sunglasses are alike. Yours will be completely unique to you. Check us out at Vaporshades.com. Use promo code TUTTLE for 15% off your entire order. Get ready for your daily dose of TUTTLE. Uh, the all-time greatest uh, intern slash producer we've ever had, of course, Tuttle. Tuttle in Florida. From the Vapor Shades Hobo Fish Camp, it's the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Anarchy! 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 No wonder nobody likes you, Tuttle. Everything's a goddamn debate. Welcome to another edition of the Tuttle Daily Podcast. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. Check out my website, Tuttle.net. That's Tuttle with two Ds, T-U-D-D-L-E dot net. Uh, I want to get into something. And this is why I like doing this podcast. Because I can be raw and uncensored. I don't think our news, I don't think anything should be really censored. I think we can learn life lessons from the audio that I'm about to play you. And I've talked about this on this podcast quite a few times. Do not get into road rage. Do not get into arguments with people, especially in the state of Florida. But this, this did not happen in the state of Florida. But you never know who has a gun right now. You know, you you never know who is just having a bad day. You never know who's going to snap. Is it worth winning an argument? I mean, the days of us getting into a physical fight and the winner shakes the loser's hand, whatever it may be, uh, but you just can't fight people anymore because there's too many guns. And I support the Second Amendment, but goddamn, this is proof that the guns aren't an issue. It's mental illness because there was a double murder in Pennsylvania yesterday. I guess uh, some neighbors got into a disagreement and it, it escalated really, really quickly. So this is uncensored. This is stuff that you're not going to hear on the radio. This is stuff that you're not going to hear on TV because I think people can learn from this. This this just shows you how quickly and how sideways things can get in a blink of an eye. Fuck you. Fuck you, you fucking I'll make your life and live in hell. Live in your dickhead. What? Man, you can tell they had a hell of a snowstorm recently up there. I know that they had that blizzard, but I mean... Come on now, what, what, and this guy's not even living next door to him. It's across the street. I would love to hear a little bit of the backstory, and I really don't even care what the backstory is. Is it worth it? Because this husband and wife, their lives are about to end over a stupid, petty argument. Do you think the wife might have been fucking the other dude? I I don't know, man. Maybe this guy was just having a bad day. Seriously, we've all had those. We are one psychotic breakdown away from doing something like this, and everybody else is. So why why attempt him? Why poke this guy in the chest? Because if you knew him and you and you know the arsenal that he had waiting for you. You wouldn't be talking all this shit right now. So I got to stop this right here. This is where the argument escalates. The woman got involved. The woman got involved. She should have never gotten involved. I don't know if it's the octave or the pitch of a woman's voice. But, I mean, two guys can argue. 
and not not get as heated as quickly as a woman yelling at a man. I, I just don't get it. I think this is exactly where this whole thing went sideways and then ended up turning deadly because this woman had to just open up her mouth. Okay, keep in mind, and let me let me rephrase that thing. I'm not saying that these people deserved it. No, they, they definitely did not deserve what's about to happen to them. But it is a lesson that we all need to take heed on and learn, especially going through this pandemic right now, as divided as this country is. Why? It, it, what, it, what good is it going to do for you to argue with somebody? I mean, for real, you would still be alive right now if you weren't talking shit. That's why I'm trying to say is that there, there's got to be something behind the scenes or this guy is just crazy. That's it. Pussy, pussy, pussy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to post a link to this video on my social media. Uh, just go to Tuttle.net. You can find all of it. But. Uh, the guy is actually walking down his driveway now because the one neighbor, the one that you don't hear a lot from, see, that's the ones you got to worry about, the, the quiet ones. But he's in the garage. Now he is walking down his driveway and you can see him reach into his waistband. Now, I don't understand why these people did not start running immediately. I, I just don't get it. I mean, they had to have known that this guy has guns. You live right next to him. Everybody knows that gun guy in their neighborhood. Go ahead. Go the cops. Guys, listen, I, I am not shock jogging here, but I mean, this guy, you had to call him pussy, pussy. Pussy. It's like the guy had a five pussy minimum uh, uh, allowment of you calling them that. And then he just snapped. I got to tell you, though, the gunman is a bad shot because the first two or three shots did not even hit the guy. Then you can hear him screaming because he had just gotten hit. So I'm sorry about stopping and starting this, but I, I got to walk you through it, okay? Those last couple of shots you just heard was the one neighbor with the gun standing over the woman, point blank. And I got to tell you, this guy is either the worst shot in the world or he bought some horrible bullets because this still doesn't even finish off the woman then. But back to what I was saying, I bet you wish that you weren't calling him a pussy. And I, like I said, this guy was completely in the wrong. He obviously was having a bad day. He obviously has some sort of mental illness. But those last shots were him standing over the woman, capping her. I think that might have been two or three shots there. Oh, by the way, whoever's uh, ring doorbell camera this is, you guys got some great fucking audio, by the way. I, I'm just saying. Because a lot of these security cameras, you're, they don't even have audio. But man, you can actually hear all the groans and everything. And it, it, it's, this is why this video is, is, is kind of disturbing. That's why I wanted to play the audio because I hope you guys will learn a goddamn lesson. And just, it's not worth it. It is just not worth it. <laughs> that last shot that you just heard was the neighbor with the gun walking up the driveway of the guy that he's arguing with home uh, because the guy, see, that's the other thing. The woman didn't even move. The guy hauled ass, really just did not even give a fuck where his wife was at. Like, he went running for the hills, but he was the first one to end up getting shot. Now, keep in mind, the woman, the wife, is still alive right now. Even though she took two point blank as the guy was standing over her she's still alive that's why i said this guy is a horrible shot or bad ammunition i would like to know what caliber he was using
Is he okay? Do you need help getting up? No. Obviously, it's not like I haven't been shot three times by this crazy gunman across the street that I was talking shit to. No, I, I'm fine. I am fine. And this leads me to my other thing that I've been saying for quite some time on this show. Do not get involved. You just don't get involved. Why do people run towards gunshots? Do they want to be a hero? Like, I'll help somebody if I have to. And I know that sounds callous, but I don't know those people. I'll save a family member, a loved one. But for a stranger, I am not running two gunshots to help him out. Because uh, these, these people that came and tried to help, they look like uh, maybe teenagers. And the guy went back to his house to get another gun. Now, this first gun the guy was using was a handgun. He goes and gets the, his long rifle, his long gun, and finishes the job, and it's sad. Oh, yeah. oh, what happened? Oh, what happened? Call 911. Go get my phone. Oh, my what happened? No. Are you okay? Jimmy. Jimmy. I'm not even going to be cool about it. I'm just forewarning you. I'm about to shock shock. But this guy got it all wrong, okay? If you're going to go out with a blaze of glory, I mean, the guy short spaced himself practically, is what I'm trying to say. Because he was saying something really, really cool there. And he jumped the gun. <laughs> I mean, yes, pun pun intended. But listen, listen to this. And, like, it would have been so much cooler on his part. Still a sad story, people. But if you know you're going to go to jail, and you know that everybody's got cameras right now, you know, because we, we see all those action movies. And right before either the uh, the bad guy or the good guy kills somebody, he'll say something catchy or something. Yeah, this this guy completely ruined it. You should have kept your fucking. Okay. Yes, the gun sound it, it drowned out exactly what he was going to say, but we all know he was going to say you should have kept your fucking mouth shut. And I was right. People, I mean, I'm not trying to s my own d here, but I said this at the beginning. It was the woman that set him off. It had to be. And, I mean, it just would have just been like the cherry on top for your psycho mental breakdown and just kill some innocent people that, yes, they should not have gotten involved. They should not have been arguing with you because you just don't know who has a gun. But he had to ruin it. He pulled the trigger too quickly. Oh, so in closing, I, I didn't play this audio to be uh, shocking or titillating. No, I, I'm trying to help you guys out. I've been telling you this. Do not get involved. Do not road rage. Do not get in, fight with, in fights with random people. Because you just don't know. You don't know what people are going through. Nobody does. That guy behind you in the bank or the grocery store or the guy that pulled up next to you at the stoplight, you do not know what type of day he is having. On top of, you don't know if he's mentally ill. Because this guy obviously was today. But I was right. The woman definitely set him off. I mean, I, I, it would have been better for him, the gunman, if he wouldn't have like pulled the trigger. You got to say the cool line before you kill somebody. I'm just saying. Just be careful. Be smart, people. It's just not worth it. Going to take a quick break. When I come back, I'm going to be talking to uh, Bing. Bing is in Sydney, Australia, and I'm going to be speaking with him next. You are listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. He's a nerd. I've only been arrested one time. A radio personality. Professionally, I'm not in the best position that I've ever been in. And Hot Talk Satirizer? 
You would think with everything that's going on, a Caucasian like myself wouldn't be able to randomly talk to an African-American or a minority. You're listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Wish you could have just flown and had your vehicle arrive a day or two later so you can enjoy more time doing what's important to you? Well, you can. Just give Starfire Transport a call. Let the professionals do the driving while you're flying. Starfire Transport specializes in RV and auto transport. They'll also haul watercraft from boats to PWCs, cargo trailers, and more. Service available throughout the continental United States. So don't wait. Call Brian today at 574-349-4193 or 989-751-6106 for your next move. 10% off for veterans past or present. Also, make sure to tell them Tuttle sent you for an additional discount. That's Starfire Transport. Do you have something you want to say? Hey, what kind of preacher is you? Leave Tuttle a voicemail. Because you're kind of ignorant. Especially if you think he's being an asshole. No mega bitch! Will your hurtful comments offend Tuttle? No, baby! Call the show at 407-270-3044. No, baby! So, alright, we're already recording. So, Bing, man, I, um... Bing, Bing... Frazier is my guest right now. I don't even know where to start, buddy, because uh, give me give me a little bit of background. How how old of a, a bloke are you? Do, do you guys call each other blokes there or no? Yeah, Blake, bloke, mate, dickhead. It all works. Dickhead, um, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm 26 years old. I um, I'm a I'm a stringent alcoholic and um, I used I like to be, to... too, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm I'm over a year and a half, man. But my uh. You know, I uh, I worked on a radio show that are now are you drinking because it's like nine o'clock somewhere over there right now. Right. It's like in the nine, nine o'clock or something. Yeah, but it's 5 p.m. somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you drinking Bailey's or something in the coffee there? Or, no, or, a bit you know? of, I'm a bit of a tequila man myself. So I mix a bit <laughs> of tequila with the with the old coffee shot and you go up and you go down and you find yourself somewhere in the middle. Yeah, now being like when when I when I was working uh, morning radio, uh, we were sponsored by a, a, a local vodka company. And every time that I would tell like a funny joke and stuff, they would throw me a single serving and then I would be up to like 10 shots of vodka <laughs> by by 10 a.m. in the morning. And I got to tell you now, OK, you're 26. That is fine for you, okay? But <laughs> I just turned 40 and I just I can't I can't keep up with that pace. But you have a very interesting lifestyle and I I want to find out let people know how they can check out your content. My audience, where can they find all of your stuff? Well, I guess I'm I'm most active on Instagram, which is just where I post my ass with some half-ass motivational quotes. And then um, my website, Bing Fraser, is sorry, www.bingfraser.com without the I, F R A S E R, mm-hmm. without the 80 sitcom. Um, that's where I do all my writing, I guess. So I'll start. Uh, I'm what kind be... of stuff do you write, though? Like, are, are you like, what, what type? Are you like a script writer writing novels? Like, no, you... no, I, I, I drink, I make poor life choices, and I write about said <laughs> life choices. So. I um I pretty now much I just... will now I will say this man now this is this is the reason I want to talk to you because I've made a lot of poor life choices in my life okay now I made a living being the stunt guy on the morning show I did all the dumb shit <clears throat> that you could think of on the radio like really really bad stuff uh, I've had all types of injuries. Now, I don't want people to think I'm a tough guy, but one of my first questions is, why why are Australians considered rugged? But I mean by rugged, I mean manly because you look here in America, we don't have as many tough guys, cool guys that you would say per se in Australia. Why why is that? Is it is it a different type of lifestyle? Because Sydney, Sydney is not like out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, that's actually a pretty big city. But why are Australian men considered like rugged guys? Yeah, no, Sydney's keeping up. We got electricity last week, so we're we're welcoming <laughs> ourselves into the modern world. Um, but there's the serious answer, and then there's the I guess the larrikin answer. You know, we 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 avoid responsibility pretty well. We um. 
got a pretty good lifestyle down here with the beaches and everything else. And um, did you say yeah. bitches or beaches? Be- it sounded like beaches. you. Oh, oh, I beaches. thought you were like. I was like, yes, I need to get down to Australia because he nah. says they have wonderful bitches there. Uh, uh, nah, the, the sand and everything else. Uh, yeah, she, she goes all right. You know, there's a guy uh, in Australia that I follow on TikTok, but he's pretty big. Brody. Have you heard of the Brody guy that's down there? He He's always like swimming with great whites and all that stuff. And I'm like, he's going to end up like Steve Irwin one day. I mean, it's just going to happen. I'm bloody useless with the modern technology. I can't keep up with the kids these days. So I, I'm, I still haven't got TikTok. Kids, I found out what it was the other day. but You are 26 years old. And I got to tell you, you Australians must have a great dental plan down there because you have the whitest teeth that I have ever seen in my life, by the way. And I'm, I'm 26 going on 50. Um, the teeth. Uh, as you say, the, the grass is always greener, usually because the grass is fake. And these, yeah. uh, you look, you're looking at a couple of uh, uh, the veneers. But yeah, uh, I, I lost my my real teeth back in Nicaragua. They're still impaled. Oh no, sorry, in New Orleans. Jeez, I've had a few brain injuries as well. But in okay, New Orleans, no. I, uh, they're still impaled in the Bourbon Street sidewalk, unfortunately. So. so- I'm glad you bring that up because me being the sunk guy, let's let's go over some of these things that we've done. Now, you're also a traveler. It said on your website. Uh, at I'll what age to. did you what what at what age did you start traveling and what was the first place you went to? It was when I was 18. I was fresh 18, wide eyed, knew nothing about the world and head up, head up, ugh, head up to uh, to Pennsylvania in your great lands. Up Wait, why Pennsylvania? Out of all the places you could travel to, why the fuck are you going to Pennsylvania? Why not, baby? That's it. Uh... No, I mean, why? Why Pennsylvania? Was there a chick? Or no, something no, you wanted to go see? I, I went and did a summer camp. No, I didn't speak to chicks back then. I had I had the good Lord on my side. So who needs girls uh-huh. when you have Jesus? And then um, <laughs> we we were up in, yeah, did, did one of those summer camps. Australians are renowned for doing a gap year. Um, so, so that means gap- taking a year off, right? Like yeah. in between high school and, and like university or college or something. We're avid uh, avoiders of responsibility. We are. So we, yeah. um, most of us take off after high school. Um, and yeah, get usually just go and, go and be a degenerate somewhere. So I chose Pennsylvania when I did a Jewish camp up in the north. And um, it was good. Good wide uh, eye opener, I guess. And then I was yeah. introduced to you to the great United States of America. And what did you think back? What, what do you think of America? Like, because we got a lot of stuff going on right now in our country. And I'm always curious because uh, I, I interviewed uh, a, a voiceover talent coach, uh, Amy Sinha. Uh, she's from Wales. And I asked her, I was like, what, what do the Brits, the United Kingdom think of what's going on in the United States right now? What, what is the, the common knowledge? See, now you switch cups. Like, how many drink cups do you have around there? <laughs> now it's a good one. That's just fresh water. Keeping up on my agua. Must stay, yeah. must stay hydrated. So, so what, what do the Australians think of America right now and what we're going through? Um, yeah, you're all idiots. That's one. <laughs> you, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. A, it's a bloody circus, isn't it? Uh, everyone yeah. just needs to have a beer and relax, I think. Yeah. Um, your your problem is your conversations being again being serious. Sorry, I know this is meant to be lighthearted, but your your public conversation is being controlled by the extremes of both sides, which is just no way to handle a democracy. Whereas, yeah, I agree. I said they they say every good government or every good society is one where they don't discuss uh, politics, and you guys do nothing but discuss politics. It is. It is no matter what you what the topic of conversation is, whether it's sport, technology, you know, all these fun things that you're meant to be doing. Mm-hmm. Let's just go and take the political side of it. And it's just like, guys, can't can't we just have a beer? We, we have a lot more in common than we have it not in common. And then you're just creating this breeding ground of hatred in the middle. Oh, and um, yeah, I, I I could go on, but I, I no I, no I, I listen. I mean, <laughs> no 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 so. no. Listen, you're you're not a, a, insulting me. Listen. I uh I try to stay away from politics, but you know, with this podcast, I mean, there are some things that just happen in the country that you gotta talk about, though. You know, one hundred percent. Yeah, sorry. Like- and, I, and the Capitol riots, you know, like our Capitol being uh, uh, attacked, 
by one side. Yes, I'll admit with you, our country uh, is divided more than it's ever been since our civil war that we had uh, back in the day. So I, I agree with everything you're saying. Uh, I also think we're screwed either way because I don't think any of the politicians really give a damn about us either way. Yeah, no, 100%. There might be things. I, I went to um, Pennsylvania, which is pretty blue. Well, it was back there. I know, I know it's obviously a battleground state. But then I went and um, studied in Mississippi, which is as deep oh, red as you can get. Buddy, buddy, yeah. buddy, buddy. You, but, um, you know, Mississippi was the last state to remove the rebel flag yeah. from their state flag. Yeah, so, yeah, right. you that you were in the heart of it. Now, I, how how was that? Oh, I loved it. It's my favorite state in America. Are, are you fucking it. kidding? Really? Uh, but I, I'll ask this, and I'll say, have you ever been to Mississippi? No, you I haven't. Have been you? Miss- no, and, but and I've, every, I've been. But everyone been- who has an opinion of the South has never actually been down there themselves. The, my thing is, I I'm I a Florida cracker. Every- I am. <laughs> I am a Florida cracker. I grew up <laughs> in Florida, in Central Florida, uh, all my life. But- so I mean, that's as southern as you can get. Oh, 100 percent. And I met every stereotype and piece of shit that, that is living down there. I met mm-hmm. members of the KKK. I met genuine racist homophobes, especially mm-hmm. like the way I dressed. I, I am as flaming as you get for a straight. You're man. wearing some leopard. Yeah, I mean, I mean like some leopard. Print there. Oath, and I'm looking good, baby. All yeah, right. you're looking great, man. And, and, <laughs> and, and, um, and, that, and that's the thing. A lot of people think in the South, like uh, everybody's homophobic. Man, if I told you some of the stunts that I've done on the radio when it comes to <laughs> uh, uh, gay type stuff, like I, it does not bother me. Like I'm, I'm very secure with my sexuality when it comes to stuff like that, and and that's true. So now, but with the South, sorry, sorry, I just want to, I want to finish my point. Yeah, go I, ahead. I met, ahead sorry, uh, sorry. Um, I'm, I met every, uh, he said every stereo, bad stereotype of the South. And it's a it's a minority. It is a very few minority. I had some of the greatest mates that I still keep in touch with, and I go in a lot of pretty heated arguments. And with heated arguments, I mean I was a smart ass, and they were threatening mm. to shoot me. But um, they they're just they're they're such a minority, and there's so much ignorance with the South. Sure, they've still got the hangover of. I mean, Jesus Christ, you you look back to the South even 30, 40 years ago, it's absolutely fucked. It's yeah, not, it it's it's still in most of our lifetimes, but. The new generation, especially some of my mates coming through, were some of the most open-minded and welcoming people. And the difference was they would have a conversation because my views personally, I'd probably call myself more center-left. I, most mm-hmm. of my views align with the left and zero aligned with their, their views, put it that way. But they would have a conversation with me about anything, absolutely everything and anything. They would, they would talk to me. They'd be open-minded. They'd defend mm-hmm. their point and we'd have civil dialogue. I That's went up good. to up in the north, and when I was traveling afterwards, I went to Cali, went to New York. You ain't getting that open dialogue, are you? Mm. You're getting no, shouted no, no, down and called a racist and everything else. And you're like, I thought we were just having a beer, mate. <laughs> Can't we just have a friendly conversation? And that's where that's where my issue is at the moment with the state mm. of American politics. No now, let me, let me, yeah, I I agree. I you know everybody wants to get offended. Uh, you know one of one of my favorite things on a daily basis is when somebody that I have a conversation with changes my mind. I love it. Like changes my opinion. I don't know why people do not like that. You know, have you, have you ever had your opinion changed when the bloke insulted you at the start of the conversation though? Oh yeah. 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 I, I definitely have. Yeah. Oh really? With, without no, was, a doubt. Yes. I was going to say like, the opposite. You, you've never, what you're going to, you're going to have someone call you a racist and then he's going to change your mind. Is he? I'm no, saying well, uh, I, I'm I saying mean, that the, the problem at the moment, the conversation starts with an insult. As soon as you insult mm-hmm. the other side, they're not listening to anything that comes out of your mouth, and that's the end of the, the, the conversation. You aren't changing anyone's mind as soon as they're not listening to you. Oh, no, I, I agree with you, but I, I also, I don't get offended, man, like, yeah. uh, be, because... <laughs> you're because on, I, you're I, on my I, side there, mate. Yeah, I, I, I really don't get offended. Like, here, I'll give an example. Um, uh, September of 2019, I... I uh, try to end my own life by hanging myself from a ceiling fan and do you realize how many pictures of ceiling fans that people would send to me on social media 
uh you know well, saying, that's oh, you... I said, yeah that is absolutely awful but at the same time why would you give those pieces of shit any of your mental no energy? i Just i fuck I, them <laughs> i i i don't but like i'm sorry to hear know... that like that that is absolutely awful and i like there aren't words to describe from my end but but Fuck you know these pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. no, but I, I mean you're always gonna get those type of people, but mm. a lot of people are like, why did you share that? You you don't you wanna know why I shared it? Well, for one, I wanted to hold myself responsible in case I tried to do it again. But then I thought about, well, what if there's somebody in my audience that is going through what I'm going through and maybe me sharing my story might be able to help them. I did get Baker acted for 10 days, and I gotta tell you, I met some of the most interesting, genuine people being in a psychi psychiatric ward for 10 days. My God, I wish I would have had my camera on me because I'm telling you right now, buddy, the content was endless <laughs> of just the people that you met. Uh, mate, I do nothing but commend you. That's as courageous a thing I think you, you can do when you go into such a dark place and you're willing to share it for the benefits mm -hmm. of others. That's awesome. So I'll pat you on the my back for that, sir. My life, my life has always been an open book, and, and that's why I like you, and, and I like your story, is because the one thing that a lot of these people that are creating content, they do not connect with their audience because they're not giving their real self out there. You know, a lot of people ask, oh, why don't you have more celebrities on your show? And I don't like to interview celebrities because you want to know why they're fake. They're fake. Uh -huh. They're, they're going to control the narrative. And, and having somebody like you on is far more interesting than having a, an A-less celebrity on. Well, that's why I despise, <laughs> I despise social media. As you can see, half of it's just me taking the piss out of other influencers who are literally just posting what they think the, their, their audience or people want them to see kind of thing. You know, it's like there's no – it's just all bullshit. It's just like I can't say this because it might upset a few people. No, oh, say I, it. No, I'll, I'll, no, I'll no, you can't. You can't say that. This is an unedited show. I want you to say exactly what <laughs> is on your mind. Do not be <clears throat> here in America. We call people pussies. Uh, I mean, <laughs> hey, what? I'm what is your? Do you that. guys? Do you guys have somebody? Do you guys have a word in Australia that would mean the same thing? Like if somebody oh, you know, is being. A, no, I think you're, you're bang on. Just the pussy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A C word. A C word's thrown around a bit more oh, than it see, probably should be, me, but it's uh. That's why I, I love that anyone's... word. Oh, I love great. that word, by the way, because the the Brits and the Australians they throw that word. I think that's some baby's first words growing up <laughs> as Brits or Australians. They love, but I got to tell you, the the most in trouble I ever got into when I was married. And I'm divorced now, but uh, when I when I was married, there was this woman, and and I'm never violent towards women at all. But if you want to throw a grenade. I call them vo uh, <laughs> vocabulary grenades. If you want to enter end a conversation, you call an American female a cunt. But I've, I've oh, learned, it's I've, like you just killed somebody. Like, sorry, God, learned, my wife was so mad at me. And I'm like, she was being a cunt. I've, I've learned that a lot when I was over there. It was like, if an argument was ever getting too heated, you just throw the C-bomb around it, it would end the conversation. Where in Australia, it's pretty much like, the equivalent it's a term of, of endearment. Hello, exactly right. So we throw it around like it's uh yeah, happy birthday, good day. And um mm. over there you'd say it and it would be the Hiroshima landing on Chernobyl. And I was like, Oh, yeah. that's that's interesting. Uh, so great reference, great reference on Chernobyl <laughs> there. Uh now you I was reading you had a pretty nasty accident where you've had some concussions and stuff. Uh, can you can you give me uh, a little bit of detail on the worst that you've ever been injured from doing dumb shit out on your adventures? Well, it's funny. Well, I said that on paper, that's definitely the worst. I was in, I'll, I'll try and surmise it as fast as I can, but I was in Nicaragua. Um, in Why place... were you there? Like, all right, so you've already gone to Pennsylvania. Why Nicaragua? So there's a place uh, called San Juan. Cocaine? Uh, uh, where you were going for the cocaine in South America then, or Central America? Oh, it's a good, it's a good uh, participation <laughs> award, isn't it? So it's, yeah. it's always, you're always yeah. good to be rewarded for your hard work. But um, yeah, in, in Nicaragua, they have a day called Sunday Fun Day, which is meant to be like the biggest party in Central America. So we, were, we thought we'd go and check it out. But it was put back a day, un unbeknownst to us. So 
the day before my my mate I was traveling with Dylan, he went to bed and he's like a oh, big one tomorrow. Is he an Australian too? Yeah, he's an Australian. Um and yeah, he, he went off to bed. So I had half a bottle of rum. I was like, I'll just finish this, I'll go up to bed. And then before you knew it, we were a few too many drinks deep. The the owner of the hostel, it's a place called the Naked Tiger, which is like renowned in Central America for being this number one party hostel oh, as well. Okay. So the, the owner starts dousing the tiles, the manager starts getting the liquid soap, and that just turns into a slip and slide. Everyone's naked, everyone's throwing themselves around. Me being the tip that I was, I went outside, did this massive run up, and the water had uh, had left the confines of the bar, so the, the launch oh. pad from where I took off, I was obviously too drunk, didn't realise. I've thrown myself forward, slipped. And broke the fall with my skull. So there was there was blood, there was bone. And I saw was... some stitches that you've had on some point too, man. Yes. Yeah, so, so that was. They did a good was... job. I I can't even see where they had the stitches out because I think it was on your face, right? Mate, and I can I can barely even see it. I'm lucky we got a bit of sun down here because the if you if you can hold a bit of a tan, then then the scar seems to uh, dwindle a little more so if, if you Buddy, look too I, closely you can definitely i'm in see florida <laughs> i'm in florida it's one of the sunniest places in the whole united states so yeah i uh <laughs> <clears throat> but you got to be careful about that but i, I gotta tell well, you you do have a thing. really good tan oh uh, thanks brother <laughs> but that was the thing so after i hit my head i went to shock but i didn't black out um so we we went for a drive to like this what looked like a set of abandoned buildings in nicaragua and yeah you know how abandoned a set of buildings have to look in Nicaragua to look abandoned. Yeah, of course. Uh, I bet they. I bet you saw a veterinarian, probably like a veterinarian, probably stitched you up or something. Nah, he, he wasn't that qualified. I wish he was that qualified. He, <laughs> um, just this random bloke who apparently I was told by Megs the owner, like, he does really good stitches. Oh, is he a doctor? Oh, not really. A, a nurse, a vet, anything? Did no, they sterilize he, he, anything? Did they even but, sterilize anything? See, that was the thing. When we walked into this room, it just looked like a saw, a scene out of Saw. It was absolutely nuts. <laughs> it was like this blood-stained chair in the middle of the room under this flickering Like a hostel, light. like the movie Hostel. 100%. Day, yeah. I say, yeah. you think I'm exaggerating. You walk into this thing, and I almost shut it. I'm like, mate, I'll stitch it together myself, okay? Just I'll take me to the 7-Eleven down the road. I'll grab a needle and a and a bit Whoa, of string. Oh, you know seven a a seven eleven. I mean, Mate, that, they're, that they're is... everywhere, baby. They, 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 Did they, they got seven elevens in Australia? One hundred percent. I'm telling you, they no came straight shit. up the electricity. Yeah, they're all no piling. kidding. They have seven elevens. Do you guys get uh free Slurpee days down there? Like I remember on seven eleven. On they 7-11 do that here in America. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's international. That, that that's is... Christmas over here, mate. Yeah. That is badass. So, all right, Bing, I I want to talk about this. So now. You have traveled. How many? Give me a rough estimate of how many different countries you've been to, if you had to guess. Not that many, in fairness. I think it would be around fifty. But um, I keep. Go, I've gone back. I've gone back to your country uh, way too many times. So I've I've been to about thirty different states, I think, which is a decent effort. Um, and then yeah, like so I've ticked off most of Europe, most of Central America, and that was meant to be going to Asia on the way back. I just came back from living in mm-hmm. England. And um, unfortunately, because of the old C word, COVID, she's uh, uh, got got stalted at the at the airport. Are you a, are you over. a big uh, football fan? And uh, not American uh, football. I'm I was going to say, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not Massive. talking about American football. Yeah, because I I went to England for two weeks. Uh, to Where catch did you go? His, um, all right. So I am a big. Uh, you as you can tell from the glasses, I'm a I'm a little bit of a nerd. But I'm adventurous. Uh, I went to Wales because they shoot a lot of Doctor Who in Wales. I went to Cardiff. Uh, awesome. Cardiff Cardiff was a great place. Uh, London. But I'm also a big Manchester United uh, football fan. Uh, and I went up to Manchester for a bunch of matches and stuff. Uh, yeah, and that. it was it's a great a, time. Good. A pretty good year to be a Man United fan. They're not flogging her away mid table this year. So. Uh they're they're pissing it away though. They they will. They're they're not they there will. yet. <laughs> but but yeah, they will. Now in your country, rugby or is it rugby or cricket? No, yeah. see cricket's our national sport. So that's that pretty much um hides uh sorry, hogs the 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 mm. spotlight in the summer. But then rugby it, league and AFL it's called are our what two is, big winter sports. What is that rugby tournament? And and I remember it. 
uh, or not rugby, but a cricket tournament where they get the tiny trophy. It's like that's a the small... ashes. So that, oh, that's the Australia. ashes. Yes. Yeah. It's Australia versus England. That's the oldest uh, cricket tournament. And I won't go on about it because I get a bit excited when I'm talking about it. And I realize none of your listeners would even know what cricket is. Oh, so but I, but I follow uh, it. And, but I agree. My audience really doesn't give a fuck. I'll, t- about I'll tell you it, one but... thing. Okay. One thing that the audience probably won't be able to comprehend. Um, so cricket is an absolutely awful, awful game, but it's a, it's an addiction for us who have grown up loving it. And the game goes for five days. Um, it's played for nine hours on each day. Is it like eight, baseball? Eight does, does it compare to American baseball at all? It's the, like, is there anything easiest, similar? In a word, no. But in, in a, if you're trying to explain it, I think you need to break it down to the fundamentals of baseball. There's a ball getting hit by a bat pretty much. But, but they after, don't have gloves. They're catching barehanded, though, aren't they? Yeah, no, that's one good thing. We're, we're as I say, we're, we're bred rugged down here, baby. We don't need gloves. <laughs> so uh, it's a harder ball than a baseball as well. So that's another fun fact. It reminds um, me of like a highlight ball. Like, yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen highlight. They throw that big solid ball up against the wall with the big like hook type glove and they grab yeah, it and yeah, then they yeah, sling yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it reminds me of. It's not, it's not, it's not too dissimilar. That's it. Hey, but, um, so after the five days in a test match, the usual outcome is a draw as well. So imagine oh, that's playing bullshit. a sport. Imagine playing a sport for five days, every, every hour of, of, of the five days and not getting a winner. That is the sport I choose to love. It is all. Okay, what, is, <laughs> why, but isn't India supposed to be really, really good at cricket? Like the country India, like they love their cricket there. Yeah, they're dominating. They just came over and and belted us on our own turf, which was a bit embarrassing. But um, yeah, when when you have 1.5 billion people to choose from, and they all play cricket, they 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 seem to wield out a pretty good 11 players for their national team. All right, so I'm curious how how was it growing up? Uh, it, you know, because you think of you know, I know how the American family is. Did you have any brothers, sisters? Like, how was it growing up? Uh, you know, because a lot of people, Generation X, which Gen X is which I am, they called us the latchkey kids. A lot of our parents were divorced. How was it growing up as an Australian kid? I mean, is it any different than than any other country? No, not really. We were. Oh, I, I personally, I was very lucky. I had two older brothers. My parents stayed together, so I'm already, you know, luckier than most in that that respect. Um, yeah, I, I, I have a pretty boring childhood story, to be honest with you. I wasn't, but uh, I mean, isn't that good though? Like, I mean, 100%. You, you, yeah, yeah, as a child, you do, you don't want a lot of drama. You just, I mean, it's good to set you up, you know, for the further things and let you kind of do your own thing. Now, did you, were, were, were your parents kind of strict Are Australian parents strict, uh, or did they kind of let you find your own way? Yeah, so I always thought they were strict until I, I went uh, roaming the world. And then I was like, oh, nah, I had it all right. And they were both, like I said, I was, I was raised pretty religious, which... Um, really? Yeah, I, did, I, did, I, I What is the big religion in, in Australia? Is it Catholic? Well, yeah, 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 Christianity, Christianity usually Catholic or... No, um, oh, Jesus. Um, Protestant, uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, the other one. I, I, yeah, I think well, what, what? Pretty, it's up there. But cr- Christianity in, in general, obviously, as a Western country. Um, now, but yeah, it, it's not really. It's it's not really in the conversation though. I was um, again when when the difference between America and uh, Australia, and I think we'll we'll probably raise the same way. The, the one thing you don't talk about is, or the two things is religion and politics. I I We've no, kept I kept it that way. And uh, I, America, America, I, I feel like when I went over there, the entire conversations around religion and politics, <laughs> I was well, like, oh, they, not in Kansas listen, anymore. I, I don't, I don't, I don't listen. I, I believe in a higher power, but uh, I think what Christianity has become, most of the fights, the wars, everything you see out there is because of politics and religion. Um what's going on with the Catholic church, uh, and the sexual abuse of minors and stuff. I, uh, I, I just, it, it infuriates me. It really 100, does. One, 100%. And I, th- I think anyone with a sane mind would, would say the exact same thing at the same time. Um, I think Christianity more, um, but I believe that 
we have let go of religion way too mm-hmm. quickly as a society. I think, um, and that's why I think uh, politics is being treated treated as a religion in itself at the moment mm-hmm. because of that. We've we've been um, we've evolved having a spiritual side to us, and as soon as we've shut that out recently, um, all of a sudden we're we're losing meaning in our life, and um, we, we we're not having any gratitude. I think gratitude's diminishing in our society. I think that there are a lot of things that we we have been quick to brush under the rug with religion and um i think i think we need it back as a society so as someone who's not a believer i think we need i think we need Mm. some sort of sane religion without the cult-like aspects that allowed them to get away with murder for so long as you said about the the religion how about the religion of as long as i'm not breaking any laws let me do whatever the fuck i want to do and that's about it I mean that. I mean it, well, it should be. I, 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 I'm like I said. I'm I'm a pretty strong believer in that, but unfortunately, it doesn't answer a lot of questions that people need in their lives. It doesn't allow for responsibility. It doesn't uh, allow for meaning. It doesn't allow for um, being held accountable when you're doing terrible things or you're you're being self-destructive, which religion always had. So I think unless you have a pretty good grasp on, on self-awareness or mm. or how you're traveling as an individual then I think a lot of people are going to need something a little bit higher to be held accountable, be held accountable right. to. Let's get to some fun stuff here. Yeah, so I was going to say, you've sorry traveled, you, that. You, no, you, 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 that way, you, way you've traveled, you've traveled all around the world. How do the American women stack up against all the other countries that I, that you've been to? Oh, American, American women are great. They're, they're, they are lovely. <laughs> They're accommodating. They, they are everything you'd want in a woman. Under, that under changes once you put a ring but, on them. <laughs> but um, like I, said, I, I stayed at a lot of um, girls, for, uh, girls' houses that I'd only met, you know, recently. And, and you'd always have a home-cooked meal waiting for you, a case of beer. And they were just mm. absolutely accommodating, which you're, you're very rarely going to get in any other uh, countries around the world. So I can't speak highly enough for... But how they treated me anyway. What about the Australian women? I, I feel like if you are not on your best behavior, you will get a bullet in the gut or maybe a, a Bowie knife in the back or something. That's how I see Australian women. But who was that one Australian? Was it Kathy? Kathy? Arle? What's no. What was the Australian supermodel back in the day that everybody loved? I forget her name, but you're only 26, so you might not even know who I'm talking about. But um, how are yeah, the I'm, women I'm with that one, but in, the, in Australia the the, for the most part? I mean, they're my favorite. Personally, I might sound a bit biased, but um, I, I love the banter that comes with an Australian girl. They are uh, they they're happy to. The, the sense of humor between Americans and, and Australians, um, regardless of your gender, is different. And uh, it's similar you know, on, in similar aspects, but you, you can push it a bit further with, with an Australian girl. Um, oh, like, like give, me, give to... me an example. It, give, me, uh, give me an example, because like I, I as an outsider, I'd be like, oh, if you piss off an Australian chick. 100 like percent. No, like if, if you cross that line, though. They're gonna hit a lot harder than uh, than any American ones are going to. They they uh they they don't have the temper, but um they won't let you they won't let you uh, walk over them like like in any other country. We're not like to an extent, obviously. I'm not yeah. saying there are girls in other countries who let you walk over them, but the Australians, as soon as you cross that line, it's like, yeah, you ain't getting away with murder here, mate. So I, I love it. But the banter, yeah, there's no one no one banter's like an Australian girl. <laughs> Um, on the line with me right now is Bing Fraser. Bing, uh, tell people once again how they can check out your content. Um, yeah, the, I guess my website's the best way to go is www.bingfraser.com. Um, just uh, released released my book about my escapades overseas. It's a terrible, terrible piece of literature, guys. I, I don't recommend you buy it. Are you gonna all. do? Are you gonna <laughs> voice it like uh, the, the books on tape thing? I yeah. think that would be great. You gotta do it. I'm in the, I'm in the middle of doing that at the moment and as you can probably tell by uh listening to this I don't have the most articulate grasp on the English language so are, are you to... kidding me man I <laughs> was horrible when I first got onto the radio and now people 
can't get I got to stop this conversation because I just noticed in the background. Do you have the supreme leader of North Korea on your live, wall? Live, love, love, brother. Live, love, love. He's uh the 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 comrade one. <laughs> now, so. hey, you have you seen his sister, the one that they're talking about might take over? Uh, yeah, have she's you checked a bit her out? As, she's a bit of a nutter in her own case, isn't it? Isn't it that I thought America was a circus? You guys aren't even going to the. You haven't even got a giraffe or an elephant. North Korea, that's where you yeah. want to go. <laughs> Man, but I gotta tell you though, okay? They say she is just as bad as her father or her brother. Like we're talking, her brother, her his his uncle was trying to take over. You want to know what he did? Threw his uncle in a pit of wild dogs. Now, not just wild dogs. The wild dogs you see in Africa, the ones that really don't even give a damn. They don't even kill you. Like lions, lions will try to kill their prey before they start eating. Wild dogs, they're eating you while you're still alive. And he threw his <laughs> uncle in a pit of those. Yeah, but they're saying uh, his sister is worse. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. You, you got to keep pushing the pushing the boundaries, I guess, to be number one. But that's uh, that's one race I don't want to be running. No, but, um, no, not not at all. But, but yeah, no. Uh, back to it. Sorry, the, the audio book. Uh, I've been doing that. I was hoping it would be about a week's process. I'm into my fifth week doing it now, and it is honestly, if if you if the Titanic ran into instead of an iceberg, like an orphanage like blind and deaf puppies that is the that is the process of me trying to do an audiobook because i can't speak english the 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 cadence or the delivery is just a pain the pain the backside so Hmm. you you record it you listen to it and it's like well that's shit and you do it again and you have to do that for every line of a nine hour book do you have a producer though like is somebody helping okay okay so can i can i give you a little bit of advice you're you're gonna be like me okay so when I first started this podcast, I, I, you got to remember, I've worked 22 years in terrestrial radio, okay? And, and I want to perfect it. I want it to sound professional. And I noticed that I was trying to make things too perfect, okay? Uh, people like realness. Now, when you're reading the book, if you stumble over a word, yeah, of course, all right? But people like you being... What I'm saying is you as a person. So so what I'm saying is if you polish it too much, you're going to be like, oh, man, that's not the Bing that I know, the 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 wild, crazy Bing. But you will also the content is the most important thing. You also got to realize that most of the people that are listening, they're not going to notice. They're, <laughs> they uh, no, I'm I'm being dead serious, like in broadcasting, when I listen to the radio or, or watch TV. I cannot enjoy it because you want to know why I see all the mistakes because I've been doing it for a while. The normal people, the people that like you, the people that are going to be gravitated, because I will say this, you are a very, very interesting person. You are. People, I appreciate people, that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on here every week and have my ego boost. This is outstanding. Dude, I, I love dude, you, <laughs> Listen, you, you want me to be honest? Like, I want to get my uh correspondence in all these other countries because right now australia is up there i think it might be number six or number seven but uh the top three right now is united states that listens to me canada and the uk but then coming up i think it might be six or seventh uh is sydney a lot of sydney people listening to me, which 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 is great and it blows my mind to be able to see that type of stuff but um but no, you're gonna, that, you're like, gonna have to come down to Australia then, hey? Go and have a, that's a, have a couple long... of beers down here. Now, let me ask you, everybody. Uh, okay, in America, I remember when my mom was a drinker, uh, she would like me to get the big oil can size Foster beers. Uh, is that like shit beer in Australia? <laughs> to you guys? Okay, that's what I thought. Trash. Just like Corona, like Mexicans think Corona is shit. And Americans drink it like it's like it's a, a great beer. But the thing is with Foster's, we don't we hardly even sell it. You can hardly get it over here. So I was living in Newcastle in England, and Foster's is one of the main beers there. And uh-huh. um, it's it's all it all goes back to the the Simpsons episode back in the nineties when uh, Bart uh, goes where to they Australia. brought the frog. Is that the frog where and they brought it. the frog? And it's yeah. just like I'm gonna take this all the way to the Prime Minister. Oi! 
It's the Prime Minister, <laughs> Andy. What's well, a good word, lads? It's the Prime Minister <laughs> holding Foster's beer. And ever since then, everyone just thinks Australia drinks Foster's. And we, yeah, we don't even drink it. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a tough one, that is, to, to calm down that stereotype. Uh, have, you, have you ever been to New Zealand? No, that's fine. It's a bit bit too close to for us to jump across to. So no, I was just asking one day because I have the biggest obsession and crush with their prime minister Jacinda Ardern. Um, no, like, she's great. I, yeah, no, I mean she. All right, okay. Now, and I'm not trying to be offensive. And then I I, I do have to wrap this up, but uh. She is, and you'll know what I'm talking about. She is that attractive woman, not not the stereotypical attractive like model, swimsuit model type thing. But when you look at her, you're like, see, because I'm always into weirder girl, you know, not not that stereotypical hotness, <laughs> but ones that are that are a girl little, next door, baby. yeah, awkward. No, just a little awkward. Maybe he has some tattoos, might be into like just weird shit, but it just into like she has that look like and that's the thing about it. Those are the type of women that will completely shock you once you because the hot ones, the hot ones are the ones that think, oh, I'm so hot. I ain't got to work as hard. I ain't got to do this. I ain't got to do that. Those are the type of chicks that will go the extra mile. I think you're bang on. I think. uh yeah, you, you'd rather go on a night out and um, you're speaking to a brick wall who looks like, you know, Miranda Kerr or whoever, whoever floats <laughs> your boat, then you're going to have a shit night, aren't you? If you have a, yeah. a good 7, 8 who's, you know, a bit of personality, a bit of ticker about you, it's going to be... One that buckle, can drink with you. Seat. That's it. Buckle up, baby. It's going to be a good night. Now, being one last question, and then uh, what is the future? Like, where do you want to see yourself? Like... Where is this end game? Like, if you had a perfect scenario, where do you see yourself in a couple of years? Like, what is your goal? I'm going to outsell the Bible. That's my plan. So, five billion copies, and then um, I'll 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 make another two or three books, and that'll mm-hmm. be bigger than uh, bigger than the New Testament second release. That will be. So, I've I've released the original Hebrew scriptures now. I'll go. I'll, I'm hoping to hit about the two billion mark. Mm-hmm. And then uh, in the next two or three books, we'll get to that five billion. That's a perfect case scenario. I mean, if you're going to the Bible angle, I'm telling you right now, we do a mock crucifixion to promote the book and at the book release. Now, like, are you OK? Like I like if we were able to draw and we're not talking thick nails, but like what if we could just get a. Uh, some type of nail? We won't go through like the bone or anything. We'll just go skin. And we'll kind of prop you up. So there's not going to be any pressure. But I'm telling you, you got to have a gimmick. No, I'm happy with that. As long as you don't ruin my hand modeling career, then I'm, I'm more than happy to play on. Where, wherever, wherever you want to strike it, I'm in. I'm telling you, man. You know, we have this. Uh, we have uh, here. You, have you ever been to Orlando? Yeah, yeah. Orlando is like my favorite place. Universal Studios is my happy uh, place. It uh, is. Absolute roller coaster nerd I am. So, I'm, I was going to bring that up. Holy land. We have the holy land experience here. Okay. Uh, the whole Christianity theme park and, and people bring their kids out here, but they do the recreation of the crucifixion every day at a certain time. You know how like Disney has their parade where it's the light orchestra. Yeah. No, they make a Jesus, a, an actor playing Jesus carry a cross while a bunch of Romans are beating him and it is gory as hell. And I'm like, everybody's like cheering. And I'm like, people, they're beating your Messiah right now. Why are you cheering? I should say if I can get my book to sponsor, sponsor a day or something. Oh man. It's, it's crazy. Hey, Bing, listen, buddy. Uh, I want to have you on more often. And I got to tell you, once this whole pandemic thing blows over, the next time you're in the United States, I got to meet up with you because what's the craziest stunt you've done? Because I want to compare stunts real quick here. Um, what do you mean? Do you mean? I mean, just, just craziest thing, thing you've I've done. done, just stupidest dumb shit that you've done. Oh, I've done a lot of stupid shit. Um, here, I'll know. give you I'll... mine. You want me to give you oh, mine, yeah. and then you can think of yours. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So on the radio show, on the radio show. 
uh, you know, this is this is I was my house was about to be foreclosed on. I needed to make some money and they had a uh, a sex toy sponsorship and the radio host that I had was on Howard Stern's radio network, uh, Sirius. OK. They wanted three of the guys, the part timers to test run some expandable butt plug. <laughs> Sounds like a Friday night, baby. Yeah, I know. Well, that <laughs> I did. That. I only made one pump and I was like, I'm out. And then then <laughs> then the other. Uh, well, that these aren't even pain things. I, I was put in a coffin with 50 blue crabs that absolutely destroyed me. I was buried alive <laughs> in concrete for three days, by the way. That's um, pretty impressive as in itself. Did yeah. you have to start eating the crabs or what was the game? No, no, the crabs, they would get that little love handle meat. Like, you know, I'm not fat, but they get that like a little bit of meat there and latch on. I was wearing a cup that they couldn't get my uh, junk there. But the other thing is, is, is I did a circle jerk challenge with three other guys. Okay. We're completely nude. Our ankles are handcuffed to each other. Okay. And we all had to look at each other. We all had to look each other, at each other when, when this happened. And I didn't, I didn't win, but I got a $75 bonus. Do you want to <laughs> do yeah, the $75 you bonus? 75 bucks on. Did you get any more bucks on? Uh, no, no, I, uh, but the $75 bonus was that the guy next to me, who was a very large uh, African American gentleman, uh, he jizzed on my right knee. Like, I got, <laughs> oh, I got God. it on me. So that I got that $75 bonus for getting cummed on on my knee. And, <laughs> and that was a little embarrassing. But right. for the most part, yeah, but I mean, it was good. You got a story better than mice. So that's all right. Yeah, listen, I look, I, I really don't care. I've yeah. gotten to the point now, and I got to tell you, you uh, you're 26 right now. Yeah. You're going to get to the point. I know you say you don't care right now, but like once you get to your 30s, you're just going to be like, fuck the world. <laughs> and you are just going to do some of your most and best creations that you've ever thought. It? Bing. Well, I'm, I'm, like, so I'm, I'm not a stunt man myself. I've, I've never done any stunts. The craziest... Craziest thing I think we, we've done, um, again, I'll, I'll, it's a little illegal, but it's an American podcast, so I think we should be okay. There was this place called Uni Games in Australia, which was pretty much where everyone goes for a week of drinking and, and sport. Uh-huh. And, um, so that's where you, you're just doing your group orgies. You're, you're just mm-hmm. fucking in the middle of the clubs, all that. It's pretty much just Romanesque stuff. But then on the way home from one of these... Uh, not have out. you ever gotten an STD from all these uh big orgies and stuff? No, I, no I, plead, I plead the fifth, Your Honor. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, on the way home, we were a few of the guys were a little too drunk and started tearing apart the bus. And we, we completely they started throwing seats out the, the lights, the actual roof. There was the panel that came through, they threw mm. that out. And the bus behind us was getting hit and started calling the cops. So the bus that we were on, they didn't actually realize that they were um, that we, we were kind of destroying it. And I, I still maintain I did not touch anything either, Your Honor. Um, but we eventually got put in front of the Australian police, the head of Australian University, and everything else. And we went through a pretty much a month's court case mm-hmm. trying to to prove that we never did this. Uh, we never touched the bus. Sir. And we got off, so all's well that ends well. In a, being, in a nutshell, it's a very long story, but I, I'll try to condense that as fast as we can. No, being, being, I want you to save some stories because I want to talk to you again. I, I need you uh, to be my Australian correspondent. So maybe we can check in uh, every couple of months, find out what you're up to. I want to be able to promote any of your stuff. Once again, real quick, tell people how they can check out all of your stuff. Um, yeah, they like said www.bingfraser.com is uh, where you'll see some of my writing, but Amazon is where you can find the book. It's called Unprotected Treks, uh, the politically incorrect blueprint for world travel. And uh, hey, Bing, yeah, can just- I? I'm not asking for any free shit, but like, I, I mean, can I? Can I get a little copy so I can read it and review it on my show mate. and stuff? I'll send it over to you, baby. Don't you worry about right. that, Tuttle. All I'll, right, I'll, man. I'll, as soon as we're off here, we'll get it. Get but it straight being, to you. But being, 
uh, I'll I'll have my producer to reach out to you and do that because my phone uh, is about to die here and uh, it's getting kind of cold here. I think it's summertime right now where you are. We, we're actually dealing with winter. Yeah, it's a little too hot at the moment. I think Australian's air conditioning systems are a little broken. So it's uh, it's nice. It's nice. Hey, uh, one light, one quick thing. Say this. You said a stargazer. Was were you being metaphorically, or do you like actually like looking at stars? Because no, I've taking, gotten in. I was taking the piss. I was just okay. joking. It's um because again, I, you see all the influencers who are just like, oh, I'm a lover. I'm a stargazer. I yeah. love jazz and all this. And you're like, fuck off, mate. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, right, I, I being, took that persona. All right, Bing, I enjoy this, buddy, and and I consider you a, a friend, and if there's anything I can do, ever do to help you out, promote anything, uh, feel free to reach out, okay? From the Vapor Shades Hobo Fish Camp. Man, maybe I would have way more sex partners in my life if I just threw caution to the wind. It's the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Tuttle's Daily Podcast is brought to you by StitchYouUp.com. For your embroidery, screen printing, vinyl, and direct-to-garment printing needs, visit stitchyouup.com. Stitch You Up specializes in custom caps, shirts, decals, and anything you want to personalize. Whether it's one item or large orders, they can handle any size. Unsure about what you want? Let Stitch You Up help you with your logo design. Visit stitchyouup.com or contact them, eric at stitchyouup.com. Stitch you up. Definitely not your grandma's embroidery. Nerd. Radio personality. And hot talk satirizer. You're listening to the Tuttle Podcast. All right, guys. Welcome back. Last segment of the show. Got to wrap it up because I got an upcoming interview that I'm going to be recording with uh, former Major League Baseball player Slade Heathcott. And I'm actually looking forward to that. I tried to get him on Bubba's show a couple of times when I was there. I, they might have had him on. Uh, I'm really not sure, but I'm I'm lo- really looking forward to that interview. Also, tonight at 7, I'll be doing another live stream on my YouTube channel. Go to it. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button so you're alerted and reminded when I go live tonight at 7. That is YouTube.com slash Tuttle. Hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Hope you guys are safe. Hope you have a great weekend, and I will talk to you on Monday. And that's the show for today. Thanks for listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, don't be a dickhead. Do us a favor. Like, share, and subscribe to the show. Also, check out the Tuttle category at 315live.com. The Tuttle Daily Podcast is brought to you by the Vapor Shades Hobo Fish Camp. Do you want some cool-ass sunglasses? Check out vaporshades.com. Also brought to you by... Starfire Transport, StitchYouUp.com, PocketPairClub.com. Special thanks to show intern Hannah and Charlie Alamo for their contributions. Additional imaging and production is provided by CCA Productions. Facebook.com slash CCA Productions presents. Show voiceover services brought to you by JCVoiceOver.com. That guy's got a damn sexy voice. You should hire him. Check out JCVoiceOver.com. If you want to help support the show, go to paypal.me slash Tuttle on the radio. Comments? Concerns? Or do you just want to let Tuttle know he's being a dickhead? Tuttle at gmail.com. That's Tuttle with two Ds at gmail.com. Leave a voicemail at 407-270-3044. To follow all of Tuttle's social media, go to Tuttle.net. Thanks again for all your support, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, yo, Terry, what's going on?